So in the lectures that we have discussed so far, we have primarily looked at uh, benzene. Now uh, we'll start looking at uh, substituted benzenes. Uh, so the first example that we're going to see is phenol. And this is going to be uh, basically bromination of uh, phenol. So notice right away that this reaction produces not just one substitution, but actually it produces the tri-substituted product. So you get uh, three bromines in the product. The second thing that you notice is that there is no Lewis acid. Okay, So no Lewis acid is needed. Okay, So this is interesting, important because that means that phenol is substantially more reactive when compared to benzene. So you may recall that uh, you know for bromination we we needed Br2 and uh, aluminum chloride. So how do we understand these two results? That is, a there is a bromination that is happening, but it's happening only in three of the possible five positions, and there's also multiple brominations. And the second result is that there is no Lewis acid needed. So they they both are uh, sort of related in, and uh, so we'll discuss that now. Okay. So uh, let me just draw out uh, uh, an arrow pushing mechanism and then uh, we can sort of look at it in a little bit more detail. Okay. So the first thing is that you know phenol clearly is a electron donating group. Although it's electron withdrawing by induction but it's electron donating by resonance. So you can uh, easily imagine that lone pair on oxygen can be sort of given away. Let me just number these carbons so that it's easy for us to follow. We follow the same pattern 4, 5 and 6. And so what could happen is that you have Br and then you have Br, right? So it attacks here and bromide departs. And uh, therefore the product that you would expect would be, so I'm just going to keep the same six member ring here. There's a bond between oxygen and carbon. So there'll be O. H and that results in a positive charge here. There's now a bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3. The bond between carbon 5 and carbon 6 remains the same. And carbon 4, which uh, used to have only the hydrogen, now also has a bromine. Okay, so let me just uh, come do the numbering once again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. And there is a full positive charge on oxygen. All right. Now you can propose that you know H plus is being lost, and this could be uh, taken up by uh, Br minus, for example. And uh, there is a loss of uh, H plus, and it happens in the following manner. So it can go back here, and this can go back there. And this restores the the neutral charge on oxygen. So let me sort of work this out step by step. Here is the so first H plus HBr is gone. So let's write that out HBr. Okay. And the second step is that in carbon four there is Br. It still remains. And in uh, Carbon 3 and 4, there is now a double bond. Carbon 5 and 6, uh, the double bond remains. And there is a new bond that is formed here. And this is my OH. Okay, So let me just number this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, So this is how this uh, reaction can occur. And this sort of uh, makes sense from many angles. The one is that the OH group is, is quite uh, electron donating uh, by through resonance and so you can uh, this uh, I don't see any problem in this uh, mechanism the way it's written. Okay, Now to understand the tri-substituted reaction, let me just redraw bromophenol OH and Br and so you know you have a electron withdrawing group by induction uh, an electron donating group by 
we'll, we'll look at this a little bit more detail but the phenol is still uh, reactive enough and so it can sort of now react with another mole of bromine and uh, this time it's going to attack in the following manner and kick out bromide and we'll stick to the same uh, sort of numbering uh, schedule 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and uh, so the product that is going to be formed we'll keep the same aromatic ring or benzene ring sorry and uh, notice that you have the OH being involved because the OH is now involved by resonance and uh, there's a new bond between this carbon and bromine and I'm just writing out the carbon hydrogen bond it was already there and uh, so the bond between 1 and 2 is broken so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 there's already a Br in carbon 4 and now the bond between 3 and 4 remains intact, the bond between 5 and 6 remains intact. Okay, so now if you have a Br minus or any other base attacking here, you can propose that this bond can break and the new bond is formed and the, it goes back to the phenol. Okay. So let's carefully redraw the structure. So Br is here, Br is already here, and now your OH is restored. And uh, just to complete the numbering, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So this is how the second bromine happens. Adds in, uh, I mean, uh, there's a substitution reaction. Now I will let you work out the uh, details of the addition of the third bromine and so the final product that you get would be OH, Br, Br and Br. Okay. So now it's useful now to, to sort of define these terms. So when one draws a benzene ring and it already has a substituent X. Okay. So this position or these two positions are called as the ortho positions. Okay. And this over here is called the para position. And lastly, these two positions as shown here are called the meta position. Okay, so therefore, you know, this ortho is basically if I number the carbons, then the numbering would tell us how this happens. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. See, ortho is basically 2 and 6, meta is 3 and 5, and para is position carbon number 4. Okay, so in the case of bromination of phenol, uh, we get the ortho and para substituted product, and uh, you know you get the tri substituted product. Now, if you want to make the mono substituted product of uh, phenol, that is, you just want to make one substituted bromophenol. Then what you can do is to uh, is to reduce the temperature, go to temperatures which are like less than five degrees centigrade, and use solvents such as carbon disulfide, and the product that you get is four bromo phenol. Okay, so this also tells us that the para substitution is more likely to be the first reaction that happens because when you go to low temperature it's going to give you this as the major product you also get the ortho product but it's minor okay so therefore you know if you want to uh, make a, a mono substituted product you may have to go to low temperatures in this case of compounds which are highly reactive to electrophilic aromatic substitution okay now we will uh, spend some time and figure out 
why this or how to understand this uh, this directing ability okay so what i mean by directing ability is basically the so when you have a, a substitution x here and if the product that you get you know if i just look at uh, statistics then the ortho position as shown here has two hydrogens and therefore there are two substitutions that are possible also meta has two substitutions whereas para has only one substituent okay so therefore the ratio of ortho to meta to para purely by statistics should be 2 is to 2 is to 1 and all your reactions if there is no nothing else that determines the reaction outcome the major two equally distributed product should be ortho and meta and para should be the minor isomer but in the case of phenol you actually get para as the 85 percent yield product so clearly there is something else that is going on other than just statistics okay so now we'll uh, try and understand what this uh, process is and you know the way we understand it is let me again draw out phenol and so this is the oh now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to draw some resonance forms okay so when i draw the resonance form of phenol so i have oh uh, a positive charge here and uh, now there is a full negative charge over here and over here okay so let me just for ease of understanding let me just uh, number these carbons so this is one two three four five and six it's carbon one two three four five and six okay so if i have to draw the next resonance form the way i would do this is to move this negative charge over here and move this over here okay so this gives me the next resonance form where there's a double bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3 the rest of the molecule pretty much remains the same okay and lastly if i have to get here so let me just complete the numbering okay so the lastly if i have to get the one more resonance form as possible so if i have to do that i do it in the following way okay so double bond oh uh, plus remains the same it's a bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3 there's a bond between carbon 4 and carbon 5 and now there is a full negative charge over here okay so therefore if you see the structures the negative charge is localized in positions in the resonance forms in positions 2 4 and 6 okay so here with the phenol the negative charges are here here and here okay in the as per the resonance forms so it is not surprising that these positions are more reactive so the electron density on these carbons is higher okay and this results in increased reactivity of these positions uh, we'll also look at in more detail the energy profile uh, at a later lecture uh, but this certainly contributes to the ortho para directing ability of phenol you know.